Dear Lord, we ask that you send the Holy Spirit not to me and to all of us here that the message that we deliver today may reach all of us, we may understand it, and may use it in our lives to further your work here in this place. Amen. Amen. The sermon I'm going to give today, I have to say, is not mine from scratch. What a surprise that is. Anyway, uh, when I was looking for material to use today, I looked online and lo and behold, as the Lord always does, on April 27, 2014, Pastor Peter Schiebel, who's Trinity LCMS in Mount Rainier, Maryland, which I have to know where that is, it's under the law, preached a sermon on the first Sunday after Easter that was centered on chapter 28 of the story. <laughs> Go figure. All right. So I called him and asked him for permission to steal, borrow, modify, whatever his sermon, and he said he'd be more than happy to do that. And in the course of that conversation, I found out he's from the D.C. area. His wife, he's considerably younger than I. He's about 40. Anyway, his wife is grew up about a mile and a half from where I live in all. <laughs> I used to be a member of I Manual Lutheran Church in Baltimore. He knew people on I Manual that I knew and my dad knew. So I guess the, story, the real part of that story is you can be LCMS and you can run. You can't hide. <laughs> okay, so here we go. There's just something about the Sunday after Easter that seems to leave some people wondering. As we gather today, contrary to the world around us, Easter is still something for us to celebrate because we know it is not just a one-day thing. For us, Easter is not just to celebrate the 40 days or so until Pentecost arrives. For us, because we know our Lord remains risen, each and every day of our lives lived in and with Him is a moment to remember Easter because we rejoice in the Lord's certain promise to us that because I live, you will live also. Yet, even as we continue to joyously shout, He is risen, hallelujah. He is risen indeed, hallelujah. Little audience participation, very nicely done. Okay. For the entire Easter season and beyond, there does sometimes come a point when we may have a thought creep into our heads. Okay, Christ is risen. I get that. But now what? We do get the point of why we rejoice and celebrate Jesus' resurrection and all that this message brings to us. The reality that Jesus did indeed conquer death, thus giving us the promise that true repentance leads to forgiveness of sins, and therefore we know that we have been granted this gift of everlasting life. But there are some times when we all, including me, might wonder, is that all there is to Easter? And the answer is, very simple and straightforward, is, yes, that is all there is to Easter. What more could you want? I say that because we have a risen Lord. Therefore, we know about the life and victory he has won for us. There is nothing we can add or subtract from what Jesus did for us. Jesus verified for us that God's love for us continues because of the cross and the empty tomb. In our Lord Jesus' resurrection, all is accomplished for us who believe. His victory is our victory. As Pastor May said on Palm Sunday in his children's chat, we win, we win, we win. Yeah. That being said, we also need to note that the story of Easter is not the final chapter of the story. It's chapter 28 or 35, so there is more to come. When our risen Lord shows his resurrected self to his disciples, he assures them that the victory he won is also their victory. So what, does he, so what does Jesus do then? He commands them to go out and tell others about what they have seen and heard. He tells them announce to the world that, life, that the life Jesus won for them is also available to everyone who comes to believe because of the disciples' testimony. Doesn't Jesus' command, doesn't that Jesus' command to the apostles also apply to us 2,000 years later? Of course it does. 
The story of Easter continues through the disciples being sent out into the world to be witnesses. Empowered by the promised gift of the Holy Spirit, the disciples are energized to boldly take the word of the risen Savior to every place they are sent, so that others may hear, accept, and believe that Christ is the living Savior, who was also sent to them so they could be saved. Isn't that the same message we should be explaining to others today and every day? What we've seen here about the beginning of the early church in Acts, and as it's talked about in the story chapter 28, is all about the power found in that message of the risen Lord shared by the apostles as the Holy Spirit then caused others to become believers because of their testimony. We see how people's lives were immediately changed once they came to know Jesus. We see many examples of people who once considered outside the life of God's chosen ones, brought into the community of faith, and thus claimed as children of God. We see people who are so moved with a serious faith that they sacrifice themselves in proclaiming the risen Lord rather than deny the one who saved them and gave them earthly and eternal life. The story of the early church is the story of the continuing victory our living, risen Lord has won for them and us. This is really a focal point for us today, the week after Easter, as we continue to explore the story. The words and deeds described in Acts and the story remind us that Christ's triumph is indeed complete, and equally importantly, that his victory is also available to us. It is the same Holy Spirit who works and moves and empowers us, as he did for the disciples 2,000 years ago, to be Jesus' witnesses, to explain that he has not left the world, but rather remains alive and active within it. Through us, as his followers, our Lord is inviting all to believe in him, so that they too can find a renewed life for eternity. The impact of Jesus' life on earth and in particular his Easter triumph over death, is shown in the face of East and every child of God created by faith. I have actually seen that take place with Martha's brother and Pastor Jacob King at that one time. It's amazing. There is no doubt things are different. I suspect you have probably seen those sort of same sorts of things in your lifetime. We see the true greatness of Easter because it enables us to overcome the world and all its nasty stuff. Because we know the way of the world is only temporary, but the kingdom of our Lord and Savior is eternal. All Jesus asks us to do to join in his victory is to believe on him and proclaim what we have found to be true to others. Pretty good deal for us, isn't it? What our risen Lord accomplished during his time on earth culminating on that first Easter day, is indeed full and complete. Yet the story of Easter is not, again, a one-day event. The Easter story continues right on into today. His risen life should become our life's focus. The Easter story continues to challenge us to proclaim its message to others so the Holy Spirit can work in them as he did in us. So they too can accept the knowledge of what Jesus has done for them. We should do as Jesus commands, with the full assurance that Jesus is still very much alive and certainly will guide us during whatever our earthly journey turns out to be. My prayer for myself and for you is that the Lord will give us the faith necessary to share that Easter message from now on and continue to share it as we have until such time as all the world adore his sacred name. May God grant it. Amen. Amen. We continue with, if we will rise, I'm sorry, we will continue with